everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, Mishmash Monday. We got a uh, big show planned today. I know I say that sometimes, but at this time I really mean it. We got a big mosh planned, a couple things to talk about. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. First thing I want to get out of the way real quick, our last video was uh, introductory to soldering for people that uh, it was meant for people that never soldered before and uh, you know a couple people in the comments were saying that you know well I was taught a different way to heat up the wire first and stuff and, and I just want to um, address that real quick and, and years ago it was a whole different animal soldering you know you had these uh, these soldering irons that were you know had a lot of heat and things like that and you know a lot of times you would uh, be able to do that to touch the uh, the wires it would instantly heat up the wire without wicking the heat out of the gun with uh, today's electronic guns you know especially the inexpensive ones like I showed last time you can't do that anymore because the minute you touch the wire it'll, it'll drop the iron the heat of the iron way down and that's the difference between a uh, a ten dollar soldering iron and a hundred dollar soldering iron that's that's where you see the professionals the guys that do this for a living they all have uh big money soldering irons and that's that's the difference it's you know because of how it keeps the heat and maintains the proper temperature you know the the inexpensive ones tend to drop down so you do have to use what's called the bridging technique where you touch the wire and add solder almost simultaneously to get that capillary action of the solder into the wire and that'll give you excellent results for the beginner um, if you try it another way and you know try and heat up the wire you're just gonna you're gonna wind up uh, a, an uphill battle and you know what I'm some of you old timers know what I'm talking about if you especially if you use multiple guns things like that so be aware of that if you follow the if you're, if you're new to soldering and you follow just what you saw last week and you do get that capillary action you'll know when you get a good soldering joint you're in you know Bob's your uncle okay so let's get started real quick couple things I wanted to address let's get started right now one other thing I want to point out uh, it is indeed pronounced soldering there is an L in there but uh, it's very difficult for us here in the, the Northeast United States to pronounce that L in there it's it kind of goes against the grain you see it's it's soldering you know you got to solder it <laughs> we abuse it and uh, and I apologize but there is an L in there for you guys I I had that in the last intro but I had to delete it because it was too long let's get started okay first up my good buddy Rick Centaur from Connecticut I met him up at Zagre great guy former Marine hell of a guy and he said he knows I collect light bulbs and he asked me said would you like this catalog I said oh are you kidding this is a 1948-49 catalog from uh, General Electric. And what's so interesting about this catalog, if you look in here, uh, they go through all the base. First of all, look at this cool. Imagine having that, uh, <laughs> that light bulb display there. But they go through this really uh, interesting thing where they teach you all about bulbs. This is a regular catalog that you would get, uh, whether you're a consumer or a distributor. And it tells everything about the lamps that you would need to know from the filaments, the types of filaments they have. You can see here the types of filaments, uh, bulb construction, you know, how it's made and the bulb bases. A lot of people don't know this, you know, about the different type of bases they have. You know, this is all things that everybody should know when you're looking for a bulb, but you don't know this. And you can't ask somebody in the stores because they don't know what they're talking about. Um, different how they're frosted how they're uh, coated. Uh, it's just a fantastic catalog. Just the beginning has so much, you know? And of course, how the fluorescent lamp works, which another great uh, instructional uh, part to have in this catalog, ballasts, which I can't stand because, you know, if you get a cheap ballast, it's nothing but trouble. But, and starters, remember starters? You know, we used to have uh, starters in, in fluorescent lights, and, and these are the different lamp holders. So what a great catalog. And then, of course, they go through all the different bulbs that they have. You know, the shapes, the sizes. These are high voltage, uh, indicator lamps, refrigerator. I mean, if you're a bulb collector like I am, this is just like candy, you know. Uh, all these automotive lamps, floodlights. GE was, you know, they had so projection lamps. Uh, just a friend, Rick, I'm telling you, this catalog, I was looking through this catalog and I was just, uh, I was fascinated. Different color 
uh, lights they used to have and and you know but today everything is LED so this is more obsolete but this is kind of the stuff I, I remember buying one of these bulbs at Spiratone Spiratone was a uh, it was a camera uh, play a lot of guys are smiling out there to come from the East Coast it was a camera place they used to sell and I remember I was doing photography as a kid and I wanted to learn photography uh, you would buy these type of bulbs and it would because if you shot regular film with using these bulbs the you know pictures would come out yellow so you had to use daylight bulbs remember that guys that shot 35 millimeter anyway Rick thank you so much fantastic camera. okay next up I got to put out a disclaimer if you're like me and you're easily swayed tune off for at least five minutes because this is gonna i'm watching my buddy brian over at b block 02 and he's doing a project on his huge lathe and he i see he's got this this spotlight this milwaukee spy so what is that what the heck is that i go on i have to search it out and i see this light and i'm like that's it i gotta get one of these things that thing looks cool and uh, let me show you what it is. As many of you might know, I'm not a real fan of battery stuff. You know, I much prefer, but you know, you need battery for stuff for certain things. So I see this thing and I said, you know, the way it was sitting up and it uses the M18 batteries, which I have for my drill and impact drive, you know, set. And I said, you know, uh, the worst part about any of these searchlights, which I've had a bunch growing, you know, remember they used to see them all the time in the 80s and stuff. You get this million power candle, you know, searchlight. But the problem is the internal batteries will go after a couple of years and it became a boat anchor unless you want to go in and try and change batteries. So this what's nice about this is it uses the battery packs that I already have. And, uh, you know, and you clip it in and, you know, there you go. You're good to go. So I'm looking at this and I say, this seems like it's a, a light that I can, can use. And I'll show you how this works in a minute. But um, you take the battery pack, you slide it on. It has, you know, different modes. You don't have to click through each one. It remembers the last mode it was in. All the things I want. Swivel head, heavy duty. I looked up a couple reviews. Everybody loves them. Crazy expensive. $100. It's like from I know what you're thinking right now. You go, what? That's right. And here's the worst part. It doesn't come with a battery. That's a hundred dollars bare tool. So now you gotta get your own battery. So that's a whole nother ball game. But I happen to have two from the tools. But I said, you know what? Let me get another battery for this thing. I know what you're thinking. I'm already down the rabbit hole. It's all right. It's all right. I'm you know, I'm past it now. I'm reformed since I bought this. Here's the batteries that you use, okay? Now, the reason I bought this with the charger, I already have a charger, right? But again, the thing with Milwaukee and how they get, how they, they sucker us in, is the battery itself, which I almost ordered, was $79. 79, you're hearing right, $79 for a battery. It's insane. But like I said, I was having a, a weak moment. The credit card was out. And I, you know, I did what I did. $79 for the battery. However, for $10 more, $10 more, you can get it with the charger. The other thing is a lot of people were having problems with sending back batteries and stuff. So I heard a lot of Amazon nightmares where people were getting these and it didn't look like it was in the proper packaging. So I was a little worried about getting like a, a, a battery that was a repack. So I said, it's better off to get it with the charger. This way it comes in this sealed, you know, it came factory fresh. Let's open it up and I'll okay, show you. Okay, so inside the package, you could see it comes with your manual. Again, the manual. You know, there's nothing, like I said, a repack. There's nothing worse than repacks for me. You know, you get a manual and you see this fingerprints on it. You know somebody had it before, but we know this is good. It's still got the plug covering. Still got the original manufacturer twist tie. You know, so you're, you're, you're golden on this case. But um, and let me tell you what this is. The reason, like I said, it pays to get the charger for the extra $10 is because if you make the decision not to, I can guarantee you Murphy's Law will make your charger have a problem two weeks after you bought just the battery and then you got to buy the charger for $35. So for $10, you, you just bite the bullet then and have an extra one laying around. Um, the one thing about this, these batteries, like I said, $79, it's, it's a, it's a hurtful to buy it. But when you push this down, you can see it's got one bar, which is typical for when they're shipped. Uh, this uses, you know, can, uh, do this could charge the M18 over here or the M12 here. And, uh, let me charge this up and show you 
how this light hey, there's works. There's one more important thing a lot of people don't know about with these chargers in this M18 pack is that when you go to charge this, obviously there's two lights here. This one is for the M12, this one's for the M18. It'll be red when you put it on if the battery is low. But when you put the battery pack on, you turn it upside down, you slide it in, and a lot of times that's enough to get the light to go. You can see it's showing green now because it's charged, but when it's red, it looks like this. Okay, so, but what you do is the first thing you have to make sure is you have to push this down until you hear a secondary click. This is the secondary click. Did you hear that? If you don't push it down all the way, you will not get the right charge. And it should not be able to come off the charger with one hand. You should have to put your finger here and pull the battery up like that to get it off the charger. If it's just, if you're just laying it on there, you're not getting the proper charge. Important tip with these okay, batteries. Okay, so here we go. There's only two things. I'm going to include a link to the uh, commercial for this on uh, in the description down below. But uh, to put the battery on, all you do is you take it like this now and you put on here and it will clip in. Okay, but here's there's only two things that I'm not crazy about this flashlight. Number one, the battery is, it, it has like, it's not solid. You feel it? It feels loose. It doesn't affect the connection, but it feels, you know, loose like that. It's number one. Number two, you see, now this is IP64 rated, which is means it'll take spray from a water for 10 minutes in any direction. It's just below waterproof. But these open vents have me a little concerned. But anyway... Um, and I know it's probably cooling and hopefully it drains out one side, but, uh, otherwise it just seems absolutely lovely. Let me show you what it looks like lit up. And, uh, you know, other than that, like I said, I, I went a little crazy, but I blame, Br damn you, Brian. Okay. So here is the, uh, the regular floodlight. Now that's the four outer led lights. You can see what it looks like here is I'm changing the mode. This is the spotlight or searchlight. You can see how bright that is. Here is the combination of the two, and if you hold the mode down for three seconds, it goes into a strobe light. Okay, and there it is down Okay, here. here I am, well below freezing. Here is the floodlight. Okay, again, this is with the battery. It only has one bar in it. Let me switch the mode to the search here. Okay, you've seen this before, the search. Now that is up in the trees here. The search does go... Like I said, it is very bright. Here is the combination of the two, and uh, and of course, the strobe. Okay, next up, real quick, I wanted to make more of those puzzle bolts, bolts that I made last. This one here, you remember the uh, the puzzle bolt? I wanted to make more, but I wanted to do something a little bit different on the new ones and. Uh, what I did is I ordered these bolts and what's cool about this. Do you see the difference here in this? First of all, take a look at these pretty cool, right? But they're aluminum. That's right. Aluminum. Look how smooth and nice they are. I paid a lot of money too. They were like $2 and something cents a bolt, but, uh, with the nut and the wash, they're all aluminum, everything. So isn't that cool? So I'm looking forward to making a trick bolt out of this one. It's a little bit bigger, a little wider. So I got a lot more to play with and, uh, I think it'll be fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Aluminum. Our aluminum. Love Next it. up again for the old timers out there. Do you remember as a kid looking for this coin in your change or finding buffalo nickels? They used to pop up in your change all the time. They made them by the millions. And uh, it was, it was uh, sculpted by a uh, James Earl Frazier. And this coin was in circulation from 1913 to 1938. And a uh, very interesting coin because it's a nickel here. And it's the first animal that was portrayed on a coin that wasn't an eagle now the face of the coin was an uh an american indian but there actually this was sculpted from just a a, a thought in the head there wasn't an actual person which is pretty interesting uh the coin itself is has very little nickel in it, it was 75 percent copper 25 percent nickel um and uh, the first version had a buffalo on a mound and it wasn't until they came out with this version they accepted now you'll often see a lot of these, the 1937 nickel is very valuable that has three legs. It's missing the front right leg. That happened from a broken die, and there was thousands of coins put out there with only three legs. And if you have one today, they can be worth anywhere from uh, $500 to $5,000 or more, you know, depending on the condition. Condition is everything with these coins because you got to remember back then the nickel, so many things you could buy for a nickel, whereas today... 
Really? What can we buy for a nickel today? Okay, next up, I know I've been telling you about this week. We're going to start a new uh, project and uh, let's show you exactly what we're going to start. Okay, and this is it. Starting Wednesday, we're going to be talking about jacks. Everything you have ever wanted to know about antique jacks, jack stands, uh, floor jacks, anything, hydraulic jacks. We're going to cover jacks for the next week. So if you don't like jacks, it's going to be a long week for you. But uh, we're going to hit it starting Wednesday. Looking forward okay, to Okay, so in closing, we hit a lot of subjects today, and I don't want to run too long. But uh, I wonder how many of you are observant enough to notice a little difference in our mascot. Uh, some of you probably picked it out, but some of you, I'm sure, had no idea. But I thought that was pretty funny. I added a couple eyeballs to our mascot. Uh, this way, he's not blind anymore. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.